and we're live. <laughs> Welcome. Um, okay, so we wanted to come on today and talk to you guys about the retreat that we're doing. June is one of the amazing, talented, gifted souls that will be facilitating and will be part of the healing process for everyone who is attending. And she is a nutritionist and emotional relief and, and trauma counselor. Counselor. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. Mary and I, and I love to riff off of each other and we love to answer all of the questions that you all have written in about from our last um, interview and conversation. I have an emotional eating program that some of you asked about, but I'm going to really be talking about a lecture and it's going to be in a workshop form for her retreat on the mysteries of biology revealed, cracking the code on sex, energy, metabolism, and sleep. Um, very, very, very excited for this retreat in particular because there's going to be a lot of powerful, powerful colleagues of ours who will be presenting on Native American traditions, fourth generation med medicine women, astrologist, you know, photography, body image work, um, and then Mariel's shamanic work as well as heart work. And my heart's just bumping out at you guys <laughs> because this dress does not want to stay connected. Um, it's excited about the retreat. It's excited. My heart is just bursting open. Um, you can't contain it. <laughs> yeah, like we both have had clients that have already signed up for the retreat, so there's not that many spots left. But if it resonates <laughs> with you, definitely write in to Mariel um, that you're looking to do yeah, it. The link is in the bio oh, to, good. to apply. Yeah, And she'll let you know if... Um, it's a right fit for this group because we are really looking for an intimate group of people that want to go deep and really transform. What I love about Mariel's approach with anyone she works with is she's so no bullshit. She's like, <laughs> do you want to change or do you want to stay where you are? Because I think all of us know who've been in any self-development, you're going to see us like doing a lot of things because it's burning up in here <laughs> and we just turn the air on. I'm taking my socks off, um, but it's hot. Um, it's getting warm We're here in, in Sedona. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when it comes to self-development, when it comes to change, we have to be a little uncomfortable to hear the cry and be willing to get out of our shells. So, right. I mean, you have to change what you're doing in order, like if you want different results, it's just the way it goes. Yeah, so people who are coming are gonna be like heavy hitters, people who want to deep dive, people who want to have a spiritual awakening and experience of deepening their connection to themselves, self-love, as well as like having a new vision for how their reality can change. And um, I just have to say kudos to Mariel for all the work she's done with the group of women um, and just facilitators that she's brought in. Um, me coming from the scientific standpoint, other people coming from a native or spiritual standpoint. So there's going to be a lot of gems. And my particular um, kind of workshop will be around the mysteries of biology revealed. We're seeing now that the male and female metabolism is different. And we didn't know this until the 1990s. So it's not our fault that our you know, parents were feeding us the same food as our brothers, if a, a woman is watching this, um, when we were growing up, especially during our fertile years. And Elisa Vitti, who's a pioneer in this work, will say, you know, a male and female, a husband and wife will sign up for a gym membership and then the guy will get ripped and the girl won't. And why is that? Now we have the research that shows our neurology, our metabolism, our sleep rhythms, as well as our energy changes. Women don't just have a circadian rhythm, we also have an infradian rhythm, which means the four weeks during our cycle when we're here to do our biology, which is to procreate, grow that little egg so that it can be fertilized, <laughs> it's changing our neurology, it's changing how our brain is working, how we should be working, as well as how our metabolism is working and how we're storing fat, how we should be exercising as well. And um, James Clear is someone who did a lot of habit development research, but his name came th first because I might need to talk about him later. Dallas Hartwig, um, his research is big right now. It's just come out, which has to do with males and females. So I'm gonna bring that in in a moment because what the science is now showing is that we should not eat, sleep, and exercise the same way every day or every season. Dallas Hartwig, 
I hope he, that's his, I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, was the founder <laughs> He's of... He's not watching. I know, I wish. He's like, <laughs> I have a brain crush on him. He's such a geek. He was the founder of Whole30. So that took oh, our... I've done Whole30. You've done it? Yeah, I did it one time for 10 months. Yeah. I yeah. mean, <laughs> our, our United States culture by storm. But that was just a tiny part of his research that he was really doing to show our species evolution and how we should work, sleep, and exercise. And that for men and women... Um, oh, <laughs> Hey. So make sure you're in oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> I'm just trying to like hide myself. <laughs> um, no, don't. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we oh, okay. Okay. we need to work out, eat, and sleep differently depending on the seasons. And so I bring that down to the female biology because we have four seasons each month that our brain and our metabolism and um, you know our our exercise should be in but he's showing the the research in terms of males and females how we should lift differently we should work out differently we should eat differently because our brain chemistry is different dependent on the winter months even though we have artificial light now our rhythms are still as if they were a couple hundred years ago when we didn't because our brain we know you know the neo the neocortex, the front of our brain is so new if we're talking about our species development. <laughs> our screen keeps going off. <laughs> um, but so is the way that our neurochemistry is working in terms of a thousand year span. So I'm gonna really be diving into that depending on who comes to the retreat. If it's all women, I'm gonna really focus on the female biology, how you should eat during each week of the month, how you should exercise during each week of the month. Personally, just recovering from an eating disorder and having now lost 35 pounds and really have a healthy relationship with food and help people from all around the world engage with that, I saw that I needed to eat more starchy vegetables or more sugar even during certain parts of my cycle than others. And I also saw that um, I didn't have to have the symptoms that I was having, cramps, endometriosis, polycystic ovary syndrome, tender breasts, estrogen dominance is a precursor a lot of the times to breast cancer. And both of my grandmothers had breast cancer and I did not want to be in that path. But last year I got my estrogen down from 60 to 30 with my diet, my exercise, and the supplements that I was taking and help a lot of women see that they don't have to have the symptoms and they also don't have to set themselves up for disease. Right. And the breasts have to do with the heart chakra. I just want to add one thing Please. that you were saying. So the retreat is open to men as well. And I know, I mean, I personally had clients where men have had eating disorders. So we're not just trying to say that it's just for women, but... Mm -hmm. Like if it is just women, you know, so you're saying yeah. like you will touch on the male perspective and all of that. Of course, yeah. yeah. And um, what we're seeing though is our approach is so much different than it used to be because we didn't have the research and science on women because a lot of birth defects were happening with the pharmaceutical drugs, with the exercise protocols they were giving. And that was hard. And who, you know, like 50 years ago, mm -hmm. were a lot of the scientists, men in white coats. And that was just because that was the way. And also, what I want to touch on is that in older cultures, in terms of, you know, when we were old, old, old <laughs> cultures, not too long ago, we had the moon lodges, we had the red tents, women would go there and bleed. So an example of exercise during our menstruation, if we exercise, we do hit exercise, we sweat really hard. If you're trying to lose weight or have issues with your weight, your cholesterol, diabetes, any precursors to disease or um, illness or any other kind of disorder, um, our biology is used to being able to rest and be protected. You know, the men would, they really respected each other's roles in society. So when I started to say men were, you know, the scientists in the white coats and the women were at the home, at one time there was really a respect for each person's role. And I took us way back when we had lots of feathers in our hair to when we were in the moon lodges or red tent. The men would know that the veil was thinner and now we see it in the neurology when women were bleeding. The left and right hemisphere we have from research is communicating and, and really connected deeper during our menstrual phase. And that's why we're really prone to doing things like analyzing, evaluating, and reflecting during that time. And this can change how we run our business, how we run our family environment, when we know how our neurology is working best during what part of our cycle we're in. We can literally activate our organism and our biology to our advantage when we realize um, that it's different than men. 
But back then, the men knew that the veil was thinner. They didn't know the brain research at the time, that the left and right hemisphere was communicating in a more intense way. But the women would have visions of the buffalo are moving here, we're going to be attacked, enemies are coming, and everyone would pack up and move because they honored the female gifts. Um, so I'm not saying that the differences between male and female are bad because I'm not all about crush the patriarchy because honestly, I believe that men raise boys. So we better raise the men to treat us well. You know, we better right. raise the men to be emotionally aware, to be interested in healing their heart chakra, to be interested in activating their emotional intelligence and sensitizing their body. And a lot of the times I share in my own life story that a lot of us go through this desensitizing period where we have a gut instinct and, um, you know, we want to fit in on the playground. So we start to distrust our gut instinct and then we, we stop trusting our second brain, mm -hmm. but men and, and women yeah. both. And that's just the post that I did the other day was how you can break your own heart. And it's from mm. what you're saying. It's when you ignore your gut, when you ignore what your heart's trying to tell you. Mm, and yeah. that is like directly, yeah. So this is just like another aspect of that. And we'll work on that in the, in the retreat, in the workshop I'll do and other aspects of the retreat that right. as we become desensitized, you know, things can fester. And, and Mariel's had her own experience of her own heart healing and her own, um, this, this chakra she's really like becoming an expert on because the wounds that we have, the medicine that we gather, then we can help others with. And so what we, you know, like need to work on the most, we teach. And right. so she is a heart expert. Um, so it's really exciting to be, <laughs> you know, in on this project with you. Thank you. Because... As I was young, I stopped trusting my gut instinct. All businessmen and others know that it's not about what looks good on paper. It's about what you feel when it comes to making a, you know, a business choice or a choice. Um, this is what I always heard my dad or other businessmen say. You know, go with your gut instinct. It's not always how it looks on paper. But as we start desensitizing and distrusting this area, and then we get our heart broken, as well as we don't always receive unconditional love from our parents, and we start to get our heart broken there, all we're left doing is trying to make decisions from our neocortex. And I personally started pulling my hair out over that because I couldn't only make logical decisions. We also have scientific research that shows our entire organism is where we really extract our creative intelligence we need everything online to be able to connect into creative discovery breakthrough you know you know invention and so we need to resensitize so that we don't have our heart or other parts of our body screaming at our attention for care and attention um, but what's great about a lot of what's being revealed in this research around our species development and working with our biology, our neurology, our metabolism, our sleep patterns, and how they have to change because we are a model of nature. Our mothers ate, you know, we might be eating Mars dust one day, but our mothers ate from the earth. And so we are a resemblance of the earth and we need to, to work, sleep, and move in a cyclical way. So I'll be revealing a lot of that science during the retreat a lot of us have become extremely disconnected from our own internal rhythms and we and don't that is basically want. what disease is you yes, know like please that speak to that no yeah. no that's all i wanted to say it was just that it's you know when you get disease it's like you're so disconnected and it's manifesting physically yeah and we don't and want that yeah um so it's great that we have the research now because people really respond well to um you know, scientific mm -hmm. literature and the journals Sue that Phillips are written. says sleep, LOL, it's um, 12.30 a.m. here in the UK. Oh, well, hopefully <laughs> you'll just, like, completely soak this in, go from beta wave right. to alpha wave, like, you'll, beta, beta <laughs> delta, yeah. you'll just, like, this will be, like, a sleep meditation. Mm -hmm. um, but we really, we really want to work on that resensitizing. I work with a lot of people who have social anxiety and... There was a story I was told where a woman was worried that someone was, you know, going to be bitchy to her. And she had had a lot of trauma in her background. And so in the bar, she decided, she was like, I ended up being the bitch. But it was only because I was trying to protect myself from these other women. Yeah, who, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, though, when you think that and then you're going to project it. Yeah. But a lot of the time, we, we protect ourselves because we've been hurt so much. And a lot of us that are hurt 
we don't realize that in order to actually heal that part of the brain, the hippocampus, we're starting to see in the research, it, it shrinks when we've had a lot of pain, hardship, and trauma. But how we grow it is novelty, doing new things. And so what we really wanna look at is how do we start to train our nervous system to feel safe laying down, sitting, talking, standing, or in a crowd? And how do we start to really um, trust ourselves and trust that we can manage our state, not what's coming at us or not what we're afraid is going to happen. And so when we reconnect, we can start to regain that trust. And um, resensitizing and understanding our neurology and our metabolism and how it also, not just male and female, but we're as different on the outside as we are on the inside. So also taking this investigatory journey of our genetic history as well as our ancestral patterns and history and trauma and how that could manifest into disease. Um, as a nutritionist, I love to look at you know the dense matter, but also the habits. You know, James Clear is big into habit development and high performance. Um, he works with a lot of athletes and other businessmen. And so we want to look at, you know, are there certain ways I was taught to live as a kid then taught to eat and that could make me prone to disease? And it's like reprogramming as well. That's what I was saying too that we'll be talking yeah. about is like you might be thinking a certain thing or have limiting beliefs, but it's just the way that you're programmed and that could be from a past life as well. So at the retreat, it's going to be like from a deep soul level and we can work on past life you know, stuff too and maybe like what you're saying with the um, emotional eating and the trauma and all of that, that could be something that like even happened from a past life, but we'll be able to, you know, heal that and, you know, find the root cause of that, which I feel like sometimes if you do, if you happen to go to a nutritionist um, and you can't figure out like you're maybe do, taking the steps and it's still not working, or maybe you're like, I haven't had that trauma in this life, so I'm really not even sure where it's coming from. Yes. It's probably a past life issue. And most places can't really address that, but this is like one safe space where we're actually going to work through that. And we need colleagues and practitioners coming together because we need an interdisciplinary approach. Yeah. No one's going to have the same healing journey unfold. No one's going to have right. the same steps that they took. Everyone's going to be very individual. And the reason I was going into the depths of the background that could lead to the circumstances that someone's in with their disease or their emotional distress now is that it's because we've been con disconnected from our heart and I love Mariel to riff off me here of like how to feel the heart how to feel the heart's calling how to feel in resonance with what's true to you and what um, pathway or life decisions you need to make to start to fulfill your design because everyone has a different you know spectrum of light they're supposed to shine on this earth and everyone's going to have a different you know way they should eat way they should sleep way they should exercise that will get them into their flow state in an interview i was doing yesterday with kelsey joy i believe is her name um or how she is presenting <laughs> online uh, i was talking about dr braverman's work which is um you know kind of rooted through his investigating alzheimer's but what he came up with was kind of someone's genius zone in terms of their neurology and he he said that there's four main neurotransmitters and each person likes a certain amount secreted to feel like in their happy state uh, acetylcholine gaba dopamine and serotonin and so each person will like fill out the forms and look at where their flow state is and everyone will be different like i'm a high acetylcholine and serotonin person my brother is a high dopamine person and everyone should eat different things to help secrete that neurotransmitter we know that the gut is the second brain and we know that 80 percent of serotonin is made there as well as um, a lot of our estrogen gets stored there and is unmetabolized when we have leaky gut or we have you know dull gut villi and so I just can't stress enough that we need to go on this independent, individual, you know, journey of the soul and heart's quest to figure out what design do I need to live out and what tools do I need? Do I need and what happened and helped me on my vision, on my journey and vision quest <laughs> was doing a lot of past life work um, that started about seven years ago eight years ago now and um that's how I started metabolizing a lot of my emotional trauma in this life through visions I was having in meditation of past life and 
resolving that and then learning about different foods that I shouldn't be eating or should be eating that help ground and stabilize my blood sugar also just emotional energy and and so there's just so many different things that we're going to be addressing during this retreat to help you really have the correct life plan and really enhance what your life goals might be and how to get there we're going to really be helping you I think kind of construct your your next steps mm-hmm. on fulfilling your heart's purpose. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of like forgiveness, letting go, um, learning how to you know deal with resentment, all of those things, and then it'll tie into what you're talking about as well because it's like you can't move forward unless you let go and release and forgive and all these different things that directly have yeah. to do with the heart chakra. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for um, this retreat. It's going to be really deep and it's going to be really great and really, really needed after this time of such, <clears throat> such, such isolation. You know, it's been a very inward time. We've all been um, affected in different ways by this epidemic and pandemic, and everyone has a lot of different opinions on it. But what we know for sure is that everyone has been changed by it, and everyone can level up from it no matter how it's affected them financially, socially, you know, emotionally, anyone who had any isolation, abuse, neglect, a lot of that came up for people during this time, even if they didn't have COVID. But due to the changes in politics, due to the changes in how everything was run and, you know, everything that happened, a lot's come up for for people. And a lot of people have leveled up 10 times if they've done their self-growth, you know, high performance, self-development work. Um, So I'm definitely sending the call out to you if you're someone (laughs) who wants to be a leader in this time, a leader of hope and light and, you know, not being in fear. I personally became a fear sticky note, whether it was deep state, whether it was um, the future, whether it was negative things from all around me, I started to feel like my friends won't be friends with me on this side or my friends won't be friends with me on that side. Like everything became so polarizing. And um, I really had to do some cleansing recently to not be a fear sticky note. And I think that Mariel's retreat is going to be helping people connect to their guiding light, no matter what's going on around them, no matter how many forces and influences and negative information can come your way, that if you have a deep connection to your soul's purpose and your anchor, your foundation, your grounding, then things cannot penetrate you. Things cannot make you sick in terms of fear. Um... And there's a lot going on right now. So I'm just, I'm here to say that you're not alone if it's been a hard year and you'd like a relief from that (laughs) experience, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of times too, like you're saying, I mean, we all have noticed different things that we were going through, like with COVID and everything, if you had time to reflect. Um, I'm sure a bunch of different like trauma or just issues in general came up for you. And another thing that I was mentioning either today or the other day's post, um, you know, it's great to be self-aware, but it's not enough, you know, like knowing isn't enough anymore. You have to actually take action and work on yourself. So if you have been like sitting at home or you're like, okay, I realize I have this problem and this problem, or this came up over COVID or whatever the time was. Um, and you feel like isolated or like everything was amplified, I'm sure, you know, like whatever issues you had. And so now you might be like, well, what do I do with this? Um, and like, that's what we could work on in the retreat because, you know, just, and, but like being self-aware is great. Um, but it's more like now, what do you do with it? Because you can be self-aware all day and night and it's not going to change you know, what is actually going on internally, right? Unless you change how you're acting, responding, thinking, Mm -hmm. resolving the emotional charges within what you're eating (laughs) Mm -hmm. that affects your neuro... Mm -hmm. We know what we eat is the precursor to our neurochemical development, our hormone development. Our food is literally programming us to Mm -hmm. secrete certain chemicals. It's like that saying that's like you are what you eat. Like it's so true. (laughs) And bring us all of your fear. Bring us all the yucky stuff. I'm doing this great uh, journaling workshop with a friend named Anna and the first prompt is kind of like what is the fertilizer? Fertilizer is made from manure, from earthworms, castings, their poop but that's the nutrients and so like what are the yucky things that have happened in your life that you can't quite see what 
the nutrient is out of that. And we'll help you become the victor rather than the victim of this year, of your life, whatever heavy baggage you've been carrying, if you're carrying it on you, if you're carrying it in disease or pain, um, we yeah, really want to help you relieve Yeah, that. when you're saying like how you're carrying it. So like a lot of people don't realize this, but like when you're gaining, like sometimes if you have gained weight and you're like, why can't I get rid of it? I'm doing this, this, and this. It's not working. Um, a lot of people don't realize that gaining weight, especially in like the stomach area, is a form of protection. So, like, you might not realize it, but you feel in some area of your life that you need this, like, extra protection, you know, and I'm sure For that's sure. something that you can yeah. help with. 80% of the women I work with have had sexual abuse, and that's why I'm really going in the trauma route of work, because these habits are always connected to our emotional capacity, you know, um, expanding our capacity to feel so that we don't have to reach for food or excessively masturbate or sleep around or drink the bottom till the bottom of you know a <laughs> bottle of this is water but something you know and so I feel like for this people is water. That, yeah, <laughs> I thought you like I know gave that disclaimer <laughs> I would be a, yeah in a different state um but I'm I'm happy we've gone where we've went in this chat because what's really great about the retreat setting is that whoever comes, there's a certain energy that takes us through the healing. It's bigger than us. And we need each person who shows up and we need their pain points, we need their gifts. What we see is that in that whole manure, fertilizer to nutrient point are oftentimes like the thing that we hate most about ourselves, our hardest part of ourselves, you know, me pulling my hair as a girl, that's definitely a sign of femininity. And now really wanting to become a specialist or really wanting to dive into this work around female biology and around um, all of that healing potential and that education is something I'm deep into, as well as I know a lot of how it feels to feel like you look weird or you feel like you're a fake because you don't look like other people, you're ugly, or if someone really knew you know, what you did when you were alone, they really wouldn't still love you. And my big thing now is that whether I was pulling my hair, whether I was drinking excessively, whether I was eating excessively, or I was meditating, taking a walk, um, or sitting in the bath, my value never changed, but my experience of reality did. And so I'm here to say if you're not you're not alone if you think you are fat. You are your fat. Or you're not alone if you think you are your disease or you are your disorder. But you're not. That's just an experience in this lifetime. And you can change how you interact with your life to create a different experience of reality. Because, you know, I've really seen it in myself and in my clients that if we can see that we're a lot more than the creative coping strategies we came up with to survive trauma, then we have, we have hope. We have still access to more creative strategies that we can use to enjoy our lives and not feel burdened by what we could come up with the best that we could do, you know? And since I work with a lot of women who've had um, sexual abuse, a lot of the times, and I felt it for sure, even though hasn't exactly been part of my journey that in a way I felt I could not when I had more weight on me let people too close I wasn't really ready for intimacy because I felt an, a different kind of abuse going on that I didn't want to let anyone else in because I was already in so much pain and so that can be self-inflicted abuse as well yeah the way um, you talk to yourself yeah, and the reality you create for right. yourself that you don't want someone too close to that. Um, so that can definitely be a protective shield because, um, you know, letting people in means you got to trust. You got to be willing to have growing pains. And that's hard if we haven't already dealt with and resolved our own pain. Yeah. So we carry it through weight for sure. So, yes, there's a lot of shame around you know, STIs, there's a lot of shame around abuse, there's a lot of shame around abortion, there's a lot of shame around being female and what it means to have the responsibility to bear and create life, but we're here to hold you, we're here to heal these sister wounds, these mother wounds, um, these fertility wounds, these shame wounds around disease, sexually transmitted disease, 
and show that it was all for a purpose of healing and growth and more love than we could ever know. And I know that's a part of why I'm here to expand my capacity to love myself, my experiences here, and each other. Mm-hmm. I love that. <laughs> Speaking of love. Yeah. Love. <laughs> so do you have anything else you want to add? I I'm excited. Like a lot. I yeah. think we covered a lot. I don't know if we have any questions. Um, the emotional eating question was what came up. <clears throat> when we did another interview, but I think I addressed it in the point of, you know, a lot of us, we haven't been able to expand our capacity to feel big things. It's not about feeling better. There's always gonna be stressors, especially if we're chasing our dreams. There's so many challenges that are gonna come up that we have to become more flexible, resilient, and trusting in the process, trusting in our leadership skills, which means to decide and then make a way for it to happen, Mm -hmm. trusting in our resourcefulness. So the stress is never going to go away. You know, these people who are, they've made it, their lives are hard still, right? Even if they're drinking champagne and living in mansions (laughs) and being driven around, they have their own stressors. But it's true. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's true. Um, No, but even when you're saying trust, I mean, not trusting is actually one of the symptoms of having your heart chakra not be, you know, in balance. mm -hmm. So if you're not trusting of people or situations or opening up or being seen and all of that, that is directly related. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And so when it comes to the expanding our capacity to feel... You know, I think a, a lot of the time we um, are not, we're not trained. We're not trained nervous system, in nervous system regulation. You know, a small child who gets out of the car and their, you know, father or mother is struggling with substance abuse and takes them by the shoulders or not so struggling with substance abuse. I bet I'll do this on a bad day by accident, right? You take your child by the shoulders. Why'd you do that? What's wrong with you? You can never do anything right. You drive me insane. And that little system is so shocked. So extremely like overwhelmed. Gabor Mate is big in the trauma field. He talks about how cognition and emotion are not separate. And then he, the little guy goes in and he's expected to get the answers right on a test, a linear exercise, when his whole nervous system is shot and he's probably not at all in his rational thinking brain, which isn't developed fully till he's 26. Um, and you know, we're constantly being bombarded by emotional stimuli, by input, that we don't know how to regulate ourselves. Um, So we've used food and we've used all these other, you know, creative coping strategies to try and balance what we're experiencing rather than managing it without food. Yeah, and I think that if you work to heal these things and actually work to trust yourself and your heart and feel confident, you won't, like, people can say anything in your field and it's not going to affect you, you know, like, people can just, like, curse you out or, like, call you, like, a bitch or something really bad and you're just going to be like, oh, well, because you know who you are as a person that doesn't define you. Yes, and and that you're connected. You, you've done the work to resensitize. It's mm-hmm. not always comfortable to resensitize because there's a reason as a child we couldn't, we didn't have the capacity to feel whatever was coming in, whatever trauma or neglect or, you know, abuse, um... And so we, we kind of, they, they call it different words in different uh, languaging, you know, like your soul, there's soul retrieval. You're, mm-hmm. You know, a part of you fragments off. Your awareness, you go numb. A lot of people like myself, I couldn't mem- remember when I was eight or younger at one point in my life. And so I had to remember a lot that I had blocked out for a reason. You know, when we talk about infants, all they can do to soothe themselves is suck their th- finger, you know, cry so that someone will hold them or look away so at a really young age we start dissociating and you know if we do it enough we can start to really numb out certain parts of us and we have to know now in our 20s now in our 30s 40s 50s we don't have to experience our reality like that four-year-old did we have the ability to expand our capacity to feel and and remember that memory and gain back our sensitivity of our heart. That that little four-year-old, it was too overwhelming. They didn't even have the rational brain to contextualize what was happening. So when we are able to bring back fully our awareness into our heart and gut, we start to move forward with true, I'd say, alignment in who we are. 
Um, we have this question that says, this may be a silly question, but do you both feel like we are a product of our environment? Do you want to? Okay. Um, so I say no, um, but I would say that yes, you are if you are not being intentional. And like I was saying earlier, like you don't have like your strong convictions and you don't feel confident and you don't trust and like listen to your gut and your heart. Um, so I don't think that you have to be at all, you know, like, cause anything can be happening around you, but like you create your own reality. And I think that if you want to view it as like, you're a product of your environment, I think that's a little bit of like victim mentality because, you know, someone could grow up in like a very, um, chaotic home or, you know, some traumatic environment and still be like successful or, you know, it's like two people can have the same exact experience and and go different ways. So I don't think it really matters about your environment. I think it's how you react to it and how you take it in and what your beliefs are when you're looking at it. And, um, and yeah, then I think if you are, you know, like obviously sometimes that could just happen to us if we're not doing the work, but you can change it at any time. You can decide, okay, I'm not going to be a product of my environment. I'm going to change my path, my mindset, um, my limiting beliefs. And you can just start like, and literally just takes one instant to just decide that this is not the way it's going to go anymore. And I will also add to it in the, the research we've had around epigenetics. You know, Bruce Lipton, other mm-hmm. doctors, Joe and Dispenza, scientists, <laughs> like they've, they've shown us that, mm-hmm. you know, two twins can be raised in different environments and certain genetics will never express in one environment or substance abuse and disease will express in another environment. And a lot of us on this healing journey, sometimes we have to move away from a city. We have to leave a job. Sometimes we haven't started the work of retraining our brain or doing deep spiritual awakening work. Something I'll say about spiritual awakening work that I have to say now that I'm going into the neuroscience trauma aspect of this field is that we've proven only in 1990s, Bessel van der Kolk, um, who has many brain scans, that trauma is not stored in the BRCA area of the brain, the languaging part of the brain. It's stored in the sensory and visual part of the brain. So all of these things we've done for centuries, dancing, fasting, singing, tapping, sweating, all of these shamanic ceremonial practices were activating the visual and sensory part of the brain so that we could remember what we blocked out and bring it into language. Now we have the scientific languaging, the neuroscience, and that you'll go into a trauma clinic and you might not do exactly that Mm -hmm. with a feather and sage, but I'll tell you one thing. When someone in a white coat tells you, we're gonna do a little something odd, it's gonna (laughs) stimulate the, you know, back region of the brain and, you know, activate, you know, this or that, you'll do it. But (laughs) do not be opposed to, any spiritual approach. Of course, check in, see if that person's trying to take your power away, because the guru syndrome is a real thing, and all of us have to learn how not to give our power away. And sometimes that comes up in spiritual environments where people want to take advantage of others with spiritual ideologies when someone's very vulnerable or hurt or and traumatized. Yeah. But, you know. Sometimes if we haven't started this deep work uh, emotionally, resolving charges and finding new trust, finding new beliefs, finding new languaging around what's happened to us, getting into a new environment can help. But we do have to change from the inside out. Like Mariel was saying, I used to always think I want to move to Israel because when I go there, I won't live to work, I'll work to live, I'll live a slower lifestyle, I'll go to events with friends, I'll sing, I'll do all of these kind of communal activities. And I chatted with a mentor of mine who does nonviolent communication work. And she said, June, what do you think you're going to get in Israel that you're not doing now? Uh, And I told her those exact things. And she said, well, those are just needs that are not getting met. And you have to find strategies to meet them here and now. Yeah, you it's know, like how, home is wherever you are. Kind exactly. Of thing. Mm-hmm. So we have to, you know, like she said, how many friends have asked you to go out? How many, you know, how many times have you had options to close your computer? I was closing my computer at 11 p.m. at that time. And she was saying, you could go to kibbutz in Israel and you would still be in your little room, you know, on the kibbutz saying, I have one more thing to do. I have one more thing and never knowing how to shut off. And this has been a part of my work that I've really worked on in myself. And... 
am still a work in progress. We drove into Sedona the other day. It was probably 6 p.m. and I was finishing an email and my partner's like, close your laptop. People pay thousands of dollars to come, you know, where we live to Sedona. And I was still struggling like one more thing, you know, until I could close it and receive the beauty of this, this nature. And I think we work on what we, we teach what we need to work on the most, but um, the product of our environment is very, case to case of how intense the environment is and how much strength and courage you've been able to ca- really gather and the investment in, in investment in terms of your time and energy into how you're able to gather your own resources internally to change. Um, so it can be easier if you shift environment sometimes, but if you can't, you can, I've watched someone completely change their interaction with their job. Same job, same home, same everything but how they've chosen to interact with their job, their boss, who they are and how they show up to their job and, and are allowed to be treated, it's been a complete 180. The, the person's not getting as stressed out. It's been amazing. And so there's always a way to change how you're engaging with your circumstances if you can't change your circumstances, as well as Tony Robbins talks about the blueprint. You know, if you're not happy with your life, maybe you need to change your blueprint. Right. If you're and 30, that's what we are, yeah. Yeah, go. No, no, I mean, like, I, like, I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins as well, and that's, like, what I'm saying that we'd, we'd be doing in this is, like, instead of blueprint, I'm calling it, like, a soul template, but it's the mm. same thing. It's, like, whatever you're thinking of, and, like, you're only going to get what you think you deserve, you know? So it's, like, changing your, raising your standards, changing what your standards are, and calling things in from there. Yeah, because if you're 30 and you don't have the white picket fence and a baby, hell no, you're never going to be happy. Right. I'm only going to be happy if, you know, I'm 31 and I've got the white picket fence and a baby and you better change your, <laughs> you know, qualifiers for what happiness is because then we're going to continue to live an unfulfilled life if we aren't w- willing to really change what our expectations are and change what our blueprint is um, or start at least acting on it. You know, right. get out there on the dating apps. Don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Call the sperm banks. Um, well, I love you guys. This has been so much fun. Yeah, thanks for being here. I'm so honored to have you here and to be part of the retreat. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to message me or June. And um, also, she has so many programs too that are so helpful. So if you can't make it to the retreat, at least you know check out everything that she's doing. Her offerings are so powerful and special and you're just an amazing human being so thank Thank you you. (laughs) yeah i'm doing one-on-one nutrition detox sessions nutrition programs customized nutrition emotional eating programs and then the trauma relief and emotional relief counseling sessions and programs (laughs) usually uh like a month long to start um it's a lot of fun and any practitioners listening to this we need your light we need your flavor of wellness we need it all so Please don't stop doing the work that you're doing. Um, we, we need to grab hands. You know, I, I'm constantly asking in the interviews I do, how do you move from a place of scarcity and competition to a place of collaboration in this wellness industry? And Mariel's an example of that. She's such a go-getter with anyone she hears that's doing work. She's like, let's team up. Let's do a collab. Let's do it. And she's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's so inspiring because she's willing to lift others up. And so if you're watching this and you're like not feeling fulfilled in where you are in the wellness industry or in this work, like grab hands with someone and lift each other up. Because I feel it in my own, this is my home, in my (laughs) own experience of life with Mariel in my world. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. The dates for the retreat. Yes, the dates, June 3rd to the 6th. and Sedona, um, Arizona. Sedona. And all of the information is in the link in my bio. So you can click that and it'll, it's literally so detailed, pages and pages long. Tells you everything you need to know, everything that's included, and um, the application is on there as well. Um, so yeah, and if you guys have any questions, just again let us know. And I will say, I was in retreat and festival production for seven years. <laughs> Did I just bust open? I busted open. This is big news here, okay? Um, and I have never seen the amount of value like the amount of (laughs) ceremonies one-on-ones workshops um 
food. I've never seen the amount that she's giving away for the money that she's costing. Thank you. Like, this is not the average retreat. I mean, there's like 10 different aspects of the retreat. <laughs> right. It would be, yeah. So I'm just saying from someone who's been in this industry, who's produced a lot of festivals and retreats, I'd definitely jump on board if you want to experience even one of the 10 different gems <laughs> right. that you'll get, like a photo shoot, I mean, a cacao yeah, ceremony. There's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's just, you know, runs the gamut. Um, and so... So I'd really, I'd really check it out for the value um, with the price. Oh, she said she loves, they love the wardrobe issue. So cute. <laughs> it's the heart. It's all about the heart. It's very fitting. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> I know this is not fitting. This was actually <laughs> done by my mom when I came and visited. Like the next day, she's like, "So I just added." button to that dress of yours <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh really thanks <laughs> okay so thank you for watching if you're here this far and we hope to see you in the retreat or you know at any of our offerings and at least on Instagram if nothing else so thank you